Hi, my name is Sonny Tupuna. Born on the 8th of July, 1934. My mom, who was always known to tell the truth, never told a lie in her life, told me that I was in fact a baby when I was born. So that's how I started off in life, as a baby. I'm here today by the grace of the Lord. We lived in a house in Brighton Road, Jacobs, on the bluff, for quite a number of years. Today it is a, a liquor store, been converted to a liquor store. We moved up to Winchelsea Avenue, also on the bluff. Uh, my dad was employed at uh, the South African Railways and Harbors. He was the senior clerk at Jacobs uh, Station. We moved from Brighton Road to Winchelsea Avenue. In Winchelsea Avenue, there was a young lady, Denise Brown, and we became known to one another. I don't know exactly what age, but around about five, six years old, uh, she became my girlfriend, uh, if one can use that term. And uh, we went to the local Presbyterian Sunday school. I think maybe we attended three or four times and somehow or the other we preferred to play and climb trees, which we did. But on our way to the Sunday school, there was a wild fig tree, a massive tree. And I used to kiss her there. And from there on, we would go to the Sunday school and we would slip out and go and do our thing. And on our way back home, uh, at the same fig tree, I, I would kiss her again and we would part company. And sometimes she would call around at our place and sometimes I would go to her, ho her home. But around about the age of seven, I would think, uh, Denise formed a, an abscess on her left uh, cheek on her bottom, and my folks owned an infrared lamp. So she used to come, uh, come in the afternoon, and my mom used to put this infrared lamp on and to try and draw out this abscess. Well, of course, you know, curiosity killed the cat, and uh, so I decided that I would peep through the keyhole, which I duly did, and uh, had one look at this left cheek, and I said, man, that is for me, I'm going to marry her. And, uh, you know, praise to the Lord, that is what finally did happen. I ended up by marrying her, and very grateful to the Lord for that. My father and I did not exactly have the greatest relationship. In fact, he thought I was completely stupid and completely dumb. So there was really no love lost between my dad and I. But at that particular juncture, in, 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 I was about eight years old, I was being sexually abused by two uncles and an aunt. And I tried to tell my dad about that. And uh, all he said was, I don't want to listen to tales. Now come here, come and tell me tales. Go out and go and play. Uh, that was that. I didn't get too far with that. And, uh, you know, I didn't know God. Uh, in fact, for many years I didn't know God at all. But somehow or the other, I think, perhaps the fact that I'd gone to the Sunday school on a couple of occasions, there, there was a stirring inside of me. And I cried out. You know, I cried out to God, you know. In fact, I, I remember quite clearly, I actually spoke to Jesus. And my dad had been earmarked to, on promotion to the system manager's office in Durban. But out of the blues, just out of the blues, he got transferred to a place called Vashbank. Today it's Vashbank, W-A-S. And uh, nobody could understand why, but I, in my heart, I believe that was orchestrated by, by God. He heard the cry of a, a, a boy uh, who had no rapport with his father. And so the Heavenly Father stepped in and he just scrambled the eggs and did whatever he has to do. My dad was, I wouldn't say a, a total alcoholic, 
in that sense. But he had two passions in life. One was never to miss a day of work, and the other was to see how much alcohol he could consume after work. So that was basically the background. In Washbank, uh, the drinking got worse by a long shot. Uh, it, it was almost impossible to live with him, and there were times when he would be away overnight, and other times he would come home at two, three o'clock in the morning and be sick all over the show. And he's, he's, uh, I don't know, there, there was just like no self-respect at that particular juncture in time. But things turned out that it was actually in Washbank where he stopped drinking. But on arrival at uh, Washbank, uh, there was no school as such. And so I went to boarding school at Dundee. And to a large extent, I suppose, that was one of the, the best things that happened to me. Uh, doors were opened where I played sport. And uh, yeah, you know, it, it's difficult to say just where and, 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 and what you feel having been abused and not being able to turn to your dad, but uh, somehow or the other, I believe that my experiences in that walk, A, with my dad and uh, going to boarding school, uh, I didn't go to the junior boarding school, although I was a junior, I went straight into the senior boarding school. And, uh, you know, there you have to fight for yourself. There's nobody there to fight your battles. And so, yeah, that was basically what, what transpired. From uh, the house that we were in initially in, in, in Washbank, the, the family moved from there. My dad resigned from the railways after 25 years of service, never missed a day at work. And uh, he moved on to this, this farm. And on the farm, there was a sweet factory and him and a, and a, a gentleman called um, George Funston were involved in making sweets and peanut brittle and, and farming all, all in one. And my dad used to manage both farm and uh, the, the sweet factory. 